I guess I just, I really don't even know where to start. Um, you know, I'm kind of a overthinker, over preparer for everything. Um, I'm trying to figure out where I really, uh, as far as my level of knowledge is where I should be starting to study for the LSAT, um, as well as the application process for law school. Um, I guess I'm, I just started back to finish my bachelor's degree and I'm doing this all online. Um, I got my associates about three years ago, um, but recently decided that I do want to go back to school, get my bachelor's and ultimately pursue, pursue a law degree. So I am working on finishing my bachelor's, like I said, online and then go from there. Okay, great. So I'm glad you're digging into this. Where are you at with your LSAT prep right now? How much have you done up to this point? Uh, none. Okay. <laughs> I am aware with it. Yeah. Okay. So that means at least you haven't done anything wrong yet. You're just beginning. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I would recommend the first step is build your foundation, build your basic understanding of the different sections on the LSAT and the different question types. The Khan Academy is a great free resource you can use to get started but that's only just a starting point. I've actually created detailed LSAT study plans to help you stay on track with everything you need to do. And they're broken down into five steps. I call it the laser approach to LSAT prep. Laser is an acronym standing for learning, accuracy, sessions, exams, and review. And I could go into detail on that if you like, but the big, the big point here is that basically you learn the theory, you familiarize yourself with the basics, then you apply that to actual official LSAT practice questions from the previously administered exams. Okay. Yeah, I bought the LSAT super prep book, and then I also bought one of the LSAT uh, 10 prep test books. Uh, so I figure probably this weekend just to kind of get my baseline as far as where I'm at to take one of those tests and kind of, I guess, gauge where I'm at. Yeah, perfect. So that's good. That's good. Those, so you, you've got a lot of the practice questions. I guess what you need more of is you need more of the foundational material to help you actually learn strategies to mm -hmm. help you better solve the questions themselves. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I guess what else I kind of want help with is, you know, on the... Um, like the logic games, the logical reasoning, stuff like that, you know, I tend to really, really like overthink everything. And so I, I am the nightmare uh, test taker that reads the question 20 times and is looking at every word like it means something. Um, what do you, what kind of advice do you give someone that can't just turn it off? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is a big issue. That is a big issue. And part of speeding up, part of being more confident just comes from having a better command of the material, which will come from more studying. But the other side of that is really to train yourself to focus. Meditation is a really useful tool for this to help you stay focused on the question you're dealing with in the moment. And that's a skill that you build over time, of course, but even just three to five minutes a day of meditation or focus training, there are some great apps for this like Headspace and Calm. Five minutes a day, over the course of a few months could really make a major impact. Okay. Okay. So as far as the, uh, um, like study timeline, um, I'm looking at, um, kind of finishing my bachelor's and wanting to go directly into law school and looking at some of the ones that I'm more interested in. Um, you know, I'm not overthinking the score way too much. Um, but I want to see what an appropriate timeline would be to start studying. Um, I, I don't see myself taking the LSAT until um, mid next year, possibly. Yeah, that's fine. So you could study, you could start studying now or in the next month or two, take it in the spring or summer, and then apply in the fall about a year from now. Okay. Um, and what is your take on multiple LSAT scores, taking it multiple times? How do you think colleges are viewing, seeing multiple LSAT scores? It's totally fine. It's totally fine. It's normal. In fact, most people retake 
and the LSAT's offered nearly every month now, and so retaking has never been easier. Law schools do not average multiple LSAT scores. They only take the highest, so there's really no downside to retaking. And obviously, you don't want to take it five or six times, but yeah. even just even even three times or four times would not be out of the norm. But I would suggest you only take it when you feel reasonably confident that you're going to do well and, and achieve your goal. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have, like, I know you kind of touched on the book references and stuff, but um, yeah, I've been scouring like the resale bookstores, half price bookstores, and kind of just combing through. There's so many options and it's kind of like, I'll find myself in a Google wormhole trying to figure out, well, what worked for this person who got into Yale or what worked for this, you know, and it's different for everybody. Everybody has a different learning, I guess, aptitude and process. But um, as far as like an overall, uh, like kind of one size fits all book or set of books, are you leaning more towards like, Kaplan books. You want someone who specializes ex- exclusively in the LSAT, someone who really makes that their focus. Kaplan's teaching everything under the sun. They're reusing a lot of the same strategies for different exams. Well, the LSAT is a unique exam and is really the hardest of the bunch. Okay. The most important thing, though, is that you want materials that are using real, recent, official LSAT exam questions. A lot of the books out there, like LSAT for Dummies, they're using, they're using fake questions that contain mistakes and don't realistically mirror the exam itself. The other thing I would suggest, Chelsea, is that you also look at video material. You know, most of the high-quality material out there now that's being put out there, especially for the new digital LSAT, is actually not in print book form. It's online. So it's videos, it's podcasts, and a lot of it's free. So I would suggest making use of that as well. I have a YouTube channel. I have a podcast. I'm putting out videos on social like Facebook and Instagram as well. And so there's a lot of ways to get material that are free and to consume it on the go, not just while you're locked down to a desk. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I drive for a living pretty much. So I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, um, yours included. Um, You know, it just, I think I tend to overwhelm myself a lot with the idea that, I mean, I know this is a very, very hard test and it's very, very important. Um, I've taken very, very hard tests and, you know, I get into the test room and I'm, you know, all worked up, I'm hyped up, I'm ready to go. And then I sit down and I just shut down. And it's kind of like, I want to be able to set myself up for better success through, you know, pretty much teaching myself mostly Um, One, because I'm in school, I work full time, and I'm trying to study for the LSAT, so I don't really have time to go to class or, you know, do anything like that. So, um, you know, having a study plan, you know, what I should be doing week by week, I know you have that on your website, um, and I looked at that. And is all of that content uh, under your umbrella, or, because like you'll have in week one, where it says what to focus on and I have no idea what it means, you know, or where to find that content. Well, the schedules will link you to everything specifically. Okay. So most of it will be either free articles on my website or videos on my YouTube channel, or it'll be actual official LSAT questions. And so since you got some of the books of 10 exams, you got a super prep and you have that book, that's a great starting point. That can be your source of practice problems. And I'll tell you, prep test number, section number, and question number, so you know exactly where to go. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think I have one of the most recent prep test books. Perfect. Um, I know a lot of yours were the older prep tests. Um, Well, what I suggest is that you use the older exams to build your foundation, to build your basic familiarity with the different question types, and then you use the newer exams for full-length timed practice. So you might want to use exams... 52 to 61 or 62 to 71 for doing individual questions by type and then use those from 72 to present for full length time to practice. Okay. Okay. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, that's, that's all very helpful. I appreciate it. Awesome. My pleasure. Uh, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, 
I guess, how to be better prepared or, you know, focusing um, on the prep test and, you know, honing in on the really getting into the week by week um, scheduling. Um, I'll definitely be utilizing that on your website. Awesome. Great. Glad to hear it, Chelsea. Please keep in touch as you move forward and let me know if you need anything at all. I'm happy to help. Okay. Well, thank you, Steve. My pleasure. Take care. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.